Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. And today I would like to talk about the conjecture rather than the theorem. There will be some theorems involved, but it's mostly about the existence conjecture, uh, whether orthogonality exists or not. We'll see what that means. Obviously orthogonality exists. Um, but it's a kind of a fun conjecture, a really simple one somehow on certain types of matrices. And it's a bit surprising that it's still open. So it's not the newest conjecture ever. It goes back to a French mathematician, Adama, probably pronouncing that name completely, just slaughtering the name. But I think it should be Adama or something very close. We'll go, we'll go for that. Anyway, it's a type of matrix and it's just really named after that mathematician. And it's open for a while now, and there are certain types of matrices that we will see, and they're extremely useful, but kind of by their definition, and you would like to know whether they exist or not in some certain form of generality. Certainly you can write down some examples. And yeah, we'll see. And it turns out that in general, we don't know whether they exist, which is a bit strange, because it actually looks like they shouldn't be too hard to find. But um, there's some randomness involved in some sense, and randomness is always a bit tricky. So, um, and then there will be a very counterintuitive statement. Well, we'll see. I don't want to spoil the story on the last slide. There will be a kind of kind of the opposite of what I'm going to explain in the rest of the talk. Okay, so let's get started. So in Adam, um, Adama matrix, hopefully pronouncing that as I said, correct. Probably completely slaughtering the name, but now let's let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. It's too late anyway. There are no regrets. It's too late. I have many regrets, but um, it's too late anyway. Um, it's very simple. So I only have two entries, plus or minus one in my matrix. So instead of thinking about plus or minus one, I can just color them. Yeah, so black and white. So that's why you see in those pictures always black, black, white, 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 black, black, white. And it's really just a kind of a better notation for pluses or minus ones. Okay. And the condition I have is that the columns are um, with, uh, orthogonal. So here, for example, the columns here are orthogonal because one plus one, one times one, uh, and one times minus one, and then you add them up, which is obviously one plus minus one, which gives zero. So the columns are orthogonal, and that's the only condition. Okay, so I want a matrix whose columns are orthogonal um, and it's kind of one of one of those black white matrices. And the question is, do they exist? And well, here are some examples of them. I will come back to that slide momentarily. But right now, um, these are just some examples. So the first matrix is a bit boring. It's just one. The second matrix is the one we see here. And the next matrix starts off with a lot of ones here. Um, and then it has a minus one here, a one here, a one here, and then a lot of minus ones here. And a minus one here, a minus one here, and a one here. But again, it's a little bit easier to think of them as colors. And as you can see, for example, let's just do the example. If you pair the first two columns, so it should be true for all columns if you pair them, but let's just pair the first two. Then you have one, minus one, one, minus one. So they cancel perfectly and you get zero. If that's what you want in those matrices. And the question is actually, can we write them down? Which is kind of a strange question because I've written down some of them here, um, but kind of in what generality can we write them? And it turns out that there's a really easy construction and it works as follows. So they, you can construct them for all powers of two, uh, including uh, one, two, uh, well, one, two, four, eight, all powers of two. And an easy thing you can prove, I will go to the construction in a second, but an easy fact you can prove is that they can only exist for multiples of four. So they can, and one and two are special, but otherwise for multiples of four. So it's four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. And since we only see powers of two in this construction here, we will see four, eight, 16, but we won't see 12. So this shows kind of existence for a very tiny subclass, if you want, namely for the powers of two. And it's really beautiful. So here's the n equals uh, six, four, 64 example. And uh, we'll hope to understand that in a second, but you can maybe already spot some pattern here. It's certainly not completely random. And the way it works is you can puzzle it together from smaller ones. So you take a smaller one here, you take a smaller one here, you take a smaller one here, and you take the negative of a smaller one here, and that's your new matrix. So let's have a look at actually those. 
So, okay, I start with this one and I put it here, 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 and I put the negative here. So that's why the last box is white because it's a negative. And now you take this little box here and it should appear here. It does. And it should appear here. It does. It should appear here. It does. And it's negative should appear here. And in fact, it does. And that's the construction. So here again, you take the, the matrix you have just seen, you put it here, you put it here, you put it here, and you put the negative, so there's always a negative here. And then you would take the next matrix, you put it here, and so on and so on. And you will construct them for those powers of two, but still something like 12 would remain open. So right now, this just gives a construction for four, eight, 16, 32, 46, and so on. But 12, for example, is missing. And there will be, in general, quite a few numbers missing in this construction. So these are kind of the easy ones that uh, Adama actually already uh, constructed uh, a long, long time ago. So this is kind of the easy ones that they want to construct. And kind of by this definition, you can easily see that they're e exactly of the form you want, namely that the, uh, the columns are uh, orthogonal. And here's an example for n equals 12 and an example for n equals 20. So 20 is also not on the list. 20 is not a power of uh, 2. Uh, 84 is not a power of 2 either. So here are some examples. And they look, I wouldn't call them random, but it gets rather random, actually. So if n is not a power of 2, it gets rather random. i show you some examples in a second as a Mathematica demonstration linked in the description. Um, so they look kind of random and it kind of gets even worse for bigger N. So uh, this question whether Hadamard matrices exist for a 4K is not quite so clear. Um, so it's just very kind of easy to see for, uh, well, powers of two, but most multiples of four are not powers of two. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, like kind of the, the small Adamar matrices. So here is a small matrix and you should have seen that before. So that's N equals four. And it's uh, our little matrix here that was pieced together from uh, the easy one. And four is of course uh, an easy number because an easy number in this sense, because it's a power of two. The next one is the eight one and it looks very familiar. It has the same pattern. Uh, but the next one is already the 12th one, and it looks very, very different already. Um, and I should say there are multiple options, and I'll just show you one here, for because in, in the end we are uh, in, interested in existence, and we don't care so much, at least for this video, how many there are. You can ask that question as well, but I'm ignoring it. So I'm saying the matrix. Also, it shouldn't be the matrix. It should be a matrix, so an example of a matrix. 16, again, is easy. It's the same pattern we have seen before. 20, yeah, well, some pattern, but it's certainly not as easy as the one from before. 24 is kind of the same pattern. Uh, 28 looks a little bit like um, the blowing up pattern for the powers of two, but not quite. There's a little bit somehow different, somehow messed up here. So for example, the diagonal here, so these are flipped and these are the same, something like that. Um, and 32 is again pretty random. Uh, 36 is, uh, sorry, 32 should actually be an easy one. This is a different example of a 32 solution. This is kind of the more, more random one, but anyway, and we can click through it and it's very beautiful. Those pictures are 52 and it gets pretty much strange. The 46 is the easy one. Um, kind of some random noise-ish. Here's one of those pictures again. Uh, so they kind of repeat themselves and then not quite, and it gets a little bit messy. So it gets a bit messy, and that's kind of the whole problem. It's not as easy as for the powers of two. And you also will have multiple options. We have seen that already, and I said that already. For uh, n equals 32, there was a non-canonical non solution, if you want. So it turns out that you can do a bit better. So some of, as you can see here, some of them actually have patterns. And you can describe those patterns, but then it gets it only gets you so far. So here's the theorem. So we want this theorem, enter, enter the theorem, and then the conjecture, let me just state it before we discuss the theorem, do they exist? Do those Adama matrices exist for uh, multiples of four? And you can kind of solve them for, for powers of two. That's easy. And then um, there is some criteria, and this is kind of not so bad. I won't read it out, but it's 
some number theoretical criterion that's not so hard to prove and it's not so bad, but you miss quite a lot of examples. Uh, so some sporadic values, they do not fit into those two patterns. So for example, 92 is the smallest one and you would need to fill in um, all of these by hand because we don't have any good way of doing it. And here's an example of one of the 92 patterns. And that's the whole problem why the conjecture is still open because these sporadic type examples that don't fit into the general kind of framework, they are quite hard. And it's one of the major unsolved problems in mathematics, um, not really because the question is, well, the question is kind of beautiful and simple, but it turns out that those matrices are actually very important in coding theory, for example. So we really want to know the existence and it's still open. Um, so as far as I've checked in early, 2023, the smallest open value is 668. So if you want to get started now trying to construct the matrix of size 668, which is an Adama matrix, well, you could solve, an, well, at least solve part of an open problem. Uh, maybe not super exciting, just doing one of them. We kind of really need a different approach for uh, the general picture. We right now only have those two uh, kind of general results. Okay, so that's the theorem. It's kind of a bit surprising that it's so hard, but the problem are the random examples that turn up. So where kind of the pattern is completely new in each step. So you can't copy anything you have seen before and those are always a bit tricky uh, to do, obviously. But turns out, and this is really ridiculous, turns out that the, 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 essentially those matrices should be really easy to write down. So here's a really beautiful theorem on uh, Adama matrices. So um, the, the entries are so tightly coupled that you can erase a lot of them and you can still completely recover. It still uniquely determines the matrix. So in, in particular, there's really beautiful proof of the, the following theorem. So the, of course the matrix and n by n matrix has n squared entries and you can erase essentially all entries, namely around uh, n squared over log of n. So you can erase those amount of entries kind of randomly delete them. And with, there's a probability involved, but essentially the probability is close, very, very, very close to one that you can actually recover the original matrix, which is a very strange statement in some sense, because the whole problem is to construct those matrices. And this statement just says, you only need to, like a very, very tiny number of entries anyway, and then you can decide whether uh, there exists a matrix. Um, so this is kind of contradicting why the conjecture is still open because this is essentially saying it should be fairly easy, but then it's not. But anyway, so um, n versus n squared, that's the number of entries versus the number of entries you delete, um, they essentially run <laughs> in the same speed. So there's not a huge difference between them. So you can really think of that you have a large matrix and you erase like 99% of all entries if you want, and you can still recover um, the whole matrix, which is a ridiculous theorem. Anyway, I showed you one of the major open problems in mathematics. It's a very simple one, actually, very, very attractive. I don't try yourself. I can't recommend that. Usually open problems are open for a reason. Uh, but anyway, the point here why this is open is that we have kind of very few general existence statements. And then there are kind of these random examples where you really need to do it by hand. And by hand is always something you shouldn't do because kind of it gets eventually arbitrary, complicated. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.